I've been doing training on some level for the past 15 years or more. And probably one of the more rewarding trainings is I that I do um, or I have done in the past is training to the effectiveness of the follow-up plan for internet teams. And what I mean by that is not asking the dealer to spend more money or less money, but really looking at the metrics and teaching a, a desk manager or GSM on the internet side of things, how to determine where the problem is, how to determine where they need to apply more training for that individual. For example, a lot of uh, stores want to, you know, their, their goal is to get more leads, more leads, more leads. Well, I would rather have 10 quality leads than 100 leads if I don't know what the origin is. And especially with third-party leads right now, I mean, just the quality is just taken just a giant nosedive. And I really, I'm really 100% on the, on the bus that third-party leads are just... I, I don't I don't think they're worth twenty dollars, uh, let alone what I've seen some but some people pay for third party leads right now. And that's the ones that I've seen and I won't name names, I won't go through them, but the quality is just it, it's here's the problem is that people are submit people are submitting less and less leads because they're tired of the bullshit. They're tired of are you still in the market for a vehicle? The generic calls that literally the person calling them knows nothing about them, what they want, even though the customer took the time and effort to fill out a lead form. So that's happening less and less. So phone calls are really where a lot of customers, or they're just coming into the store. There's where That's where a lot of customers are actually interacting uh, with the stores. They're either calling in or they're walking in the front door. Um, they're coming out of the service drive, you know, the, the, the different ways that people are coming into the dealership or approaching the dealership, it's definitely changing. The digital retailing tool is gaining a, a little bit of ground. It's slow because it's a, it's a learning process. But those of us who have been around long enough to remember when we didn't sell cars on the internet can remember how slow it was for people to actually get to the point where they were submitting lead forms. So digital retailing tools are going to have the same slow roll up. But you teach somebody, you teach a customer how to buy their car with a digital retailing tool and how easy that is. We, we've really gotten away from making the sales uh, process easy for the consumer. And what I mean by that is still to this day, I hear stories about people being trapped, quote unquote, in a dealership because nobody can find their keys. Um, they're getting undercut on a price online and then they go drive two hours to the dealership and the uh, salesperson forgot to mention there was $3,000 in a protection package add-on or you know different things like that that I'm still hearing that are happening today these tactics are still happening today I'm not talking about 10 15 years ago I'm talking about now today 2024 so it, it really stands to you stands to reason you have to ask yourself what is your strategy for your dealership are you just trying out to make you know pure 100 percent as much profit as we can on every single customer well then you're probably not going to last too long because you're not going to have a whole lot of customer loyalty but if you treat the customers right if you make the sales process easy in that it doesn't take people four hours they don't feel trapped they can do some of the process at home and then come into the dealership to drive the car and you make it not such a tedious process this isn't even the biggest purchase people make you know it's the second biggest purchase people make but people don't go have the same animosity for buying a house and I guarantee there's a lot more loopholes in buying a house that people make profits and buying cars the problem is is that we've just we've earned this reputation for I mean just honestly being lazy and I'm not saying it's a hundred percent of people all the time hundred percent of the time but I'm saying there's there's situations out there that I hear of that I'm just like wait I'm sorry you drove two hours because they told you the price was 10,000 and when you get there the price was 15 
because of some ad arbitrary atom that they didn't, couldn't even explain to you what it is? What? So I, I really want to challenge you to break away from what you're normally doing. If you're not happy with the results that you have right now with your sales, I would really challenge you to break away from what you're currently doing. Break out of that mold. Go back to square one. What if you were selling the car to your wife, your mother, your brother, your sister, someone you actually really care about? How would you want them to be treated? And I'm not talking about the pricing. There, there are deals that you can make money on and there are deals that you shouldn't make money on. And everybody, I think, can discern between the two. And if you can't discern between the two, then that's a whole nother conversation. But I really think we need to get back to customizing the follow-up process around the customer, not around the marketing funnel, not around where someone is in the purchase process, because there's so few actual form leads being sent in, and a lot of people are just either calling, chatting, or walking into the store. I really think we can take the time and craft a very personalized response to our leads if we want to see a better engagement rate than we currently have. So instead of firing off your standard email template when someone sends in a lead, hey, I saw you were looking at this vehicle. Yes, it's in stock. Here's the price. When can you come in for a test drive? Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Especially if somebody comes in through a third party source, they're not ready for a test drive. Even if they come in through the OEM manufacturer website, they might not be ready for a test drive. The only time that's even appropriate to ask is this if you got the lead off of your own website. And even then, they might be past that point. You have to discern that. So instead of asking when can you come in for a test drive, why don't we start asking where are you in the purchase process? Are you still in the gathering information phase? Are you in the I'm ready for a test drive? Do you need to apply for financing or are you paying cash? Ask a customer where are you in your purchase vehicle purchase process. I would like to help add to that and not feel, make you feel pressured to come in for a test drive when you're not there yet. So just being that transparent with a customer and on the phone or by email, I really think that is the, that is the new way to kind of approach the follow-up game because it used to be very simple to track. You know, they you're looking, oh, I, my neighbor got a new car, I might need a new car, or, oh, my car is, you know, 10 years old, I might need a new car, then I need to look at interest rates, then I need to look at inventory, or, you know, however, it was very standard the way people went through the marketing funnel, the way people went through the purchase process. It is not standard anymore. It is not. There is no, people are all over the place, and that's because there's just so much information out there. So, I will challenge you this week to take a look at what your standardized follow-up process is for your phone calls, for your internet leads, for your chats, for your digital retailing tool uh, leads. And your first email should include, instead of saying, when can you come in for a test drive, where are you in the purchase process? Try to start the conversation there to see how you can best support them into making that decision whether that be from an educational standpoint, learning more about the car, the finance programs, the rebates you have, or if they are in fact ready for a test drive, let them tell you, stop asking for it. The best thing you can do is let them tell you what the next step is because then the pressure is not on them. You, you've not applied the pressure like, test drive, test drive, test drive. It's more, I wanna help you move to the next phase in your, per, in your purchase decision. How can I support that? And now you're providing a customer service, there's a hair on me. Uh, you know, you're providing, uh, you're providing good customer service and that's what's gonna keep customers coming back long-term. So, hope that helps. Uh, have a good week, happy selling.